Blather 19. I was just listening to Prayer 94 by Bon Jovi. And, um, we're halfway there. Living on a prayer. We haven't gotten there. No, it's tough working with those dots. Now, the thing is, um, you know, I think there's probably is when it comes right down to it, there's probably something of a challenge in eternity that, uh, if ultimately you don't work it out and don't pull through, that you don't work it out and you, you don't pull through. Okay. You know, that melancholia, so prevalent in so, some of these recent pop songs from recent decades, that'll drag you in, you know. Just go on the stand there and watch me burn. Because that's okay, because I like the way it hurts, you know. That melancholia, which, you know, so many of those songs are like that. I think, in the end, you know, when you go off and you're cool, as I think the Lord's been telling me, when you've toughened up and you're cool in eternity, You'll choose those tough choices. And you'll be cool. And I've preached on this before with the bad boys and girls in Kitchwood here. And the choices will be there. Wrong or right, they'll keep you there. So the thrill is not really much to me in the end, if it's a melancholy thrill which ends in the pit, it ain't worth it. So the realities of life, which are not the Hollywood fantasy, but the real world, if they're the melancholies which end in the pit, then it's not eternity. And it's not eternal, and they ain't worth it. See, life is not a big Hollywood blockbuster where you're the action hero. That's not really how it is. An eternal life is not the big blockbuster where the action where you're the action hero. That's not really how it is. It's a lot more normal and a lot more plain. So when your favourite movie has got you in a mood or your favourite rock song has, song has got you in a mood, remember it's a taste of fantasy and escapism. That's all it really is. There's a lot of that stuff, sometimes it does, but a lot of the time it doesn't always relate to real life. You almost lose your faith when you hear reality, don't you? Not living in the fantastical world where it's all glorious and your destiny is wonderful, but the nine to five grind. But the real world, when you get over it and embrace the things which last forever, has eternal pleasures and eternal things which are the moments which really do matter. They have those exciting bits which are real life, which are not contrived things, but which are natural outflow and onflow of real life activity. That's the thing, real life activity. Things that you're gonna do in the real world, simple things that you do in the real world. Some of the best bits, though, which are real-world things, for me, for example, which I've gone through a bit in life, it's, it's when you've, um, you've left a movie theatre or something, not the movie itself, but you've left a movie theatre or, or a cafe or, or a tertiary education institution, and it's, it's like it's, it's 7.30pm and it's, and it's dark and the buses are a bit late and you're, you're on the bus from like from Woden coming into Tuggeron or something, you're going through Tuggeron and 
here and there, maybe in Fatim or somewhere. And it's like, I mean, perhaps it's late, maybe it's 10, 10 p.m. and there's three of you on the bus, or two people on the bus. And it's dark and the bus lights are on. And you're just sort of, you're tired a bit, and you may maybe be leaning your head against the window and looking out of the city. We know those moments, don't we? We know what that's like, don't we? Sort of, you don't really feel alone necessarily, but you know, it's got that feel to it, those bus trips, hasn't it? I mean, just on the city bus, and you know, it's, it's got something about it. It's a little bit scary at times, because, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit scary at night, you know, on a, on a trip with not necessarily any safety much, but, um, sort of feel a bit of life which is and that's the thing as I just said that's real life that happens that's natural eternal life nature at its best the darkness at its best of course when you're uh, in a restaurant with a loved one you're eating a nice meal over there putting on a show, that's a good moment. Well, you've bothered to hack up Mount Taylor. You've bothered to do the, the trip. Maybe it's the afternoon and you're seeing the sunset and you've got someone with you who's done the, done the climb with you. You notice the breeze and the, and the, the grass and the clouds and the... It feels alive, doesn't it? those sorts of things. But that sort of thing is, is a real thing. And it's an eternal thing. And it's not a Hollywood fantasy. It's real life. It's something which is not really contrived. Because nature walks are a natural part of human exploration and exercise and so forth. It's a real enough thing. The point, I suppose, to that is if there has to be a point to something. Enjoyment of the sunset and a bit of exercise. And getting out of the house. But I, I suppose the more real your life is with experiences or exciting bits which are real life experiences, things which you do in a natural on flow of things and not caught up in the great novel that you're reading, which is an experience reading the novel or the movie or the music song or whatever, but real life experiences which um, happen in, in, a, in an internal way, they can always go on. And they, appreciate and gain something from. Yeah. 